Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. This video is all about vitamin C. Which products you should be wearing, what percentage you should be applying, how do you incorporate into your skincare routine, and what's happening to your skin with vitamin C on a biological level. So why do we need vitamin C? Well, first of all, we need to understand the skin barrier. The skin barrier literally protects you against UV radiation, pollution, visible light, and infrared, so basically everything. So all these triggers can actually lead to reactive oxygen and nitrogen species, also known as free radicals. Free radicals are the enemy. They are the baddies. They are the worst thing for your skin. Free radicals react with the biomolecules in the skin to cause damage. It affects both the epidermis, the top layer of skin, and the dermis. So that's where all the capillaries, the blood vessels are, where your nerve endings are, and it prevents growth of tissue. Free radicals also modify the functioning of cells. This affects the lipids and the protein structures of the skin. It also decreases the skin's elasticity and flexibility, and also the protective mechanism of the skin. So what ends up happening is aging, the thing that we all dread. So vitamin C is also known as ascorbic acid. So when you look at the back of packaging, you might see the word ascorbic, which means vitamin C. Now what it basically does is it neutralizes the free radicals, the nitrogen and the oxygen free radicals. So it prevents future damage from taking place. Vitamin C also stimulates ceramide synthesis. Ceramides are important for your skin hydration. Don't forget, with skin of color, we actually have a lower percentage of ceramides in our skin, so it's important for that as well. Vitamin C is also involved in the synthesis of collagen type 1 and type 3. These are important for the dermis, so the lower, lower la layers of the skin, and also of the capillaries. And so what that does basically improves the firmness and the elasticity of the skin. So a double-blinded clinical study was done with 5% vitamin C used for a six-month period. And there was a significant reduction in the deep furrows of the skin. Um, which basically alludes to the fact that it's obviously good for wrinkles too. Now at higher percentages, so about five to 10%, it can actually help to reverse hyperpigmentation as well. So as a manufacturer of myself, the biggest issue when dealing with l acid is just how unstable it is. Within one month, that very valuable raw material would have deteriorated by 50%. So, you know, it's it's a challenge when it comes to the technology and how to stabilize it. It tends to turn your creams yellow. So what we do is we actually use fixing and stabilizing methods in order to keep it as stable as possible. So those would be things like adding another antioxidant such as ferulic acid. So in a lot of formulations, you'll see vitamin C with ferulic acid for that reason. Another thing that we can do is actually reduce the pH. When you reduce the pH, it becomes more stable, but also don't forget with skin of color, you have to be a bit cautious because low pH can lead to more pigmentation. A more durable form of vitamin C are salts. So salts with magnesium and sodium. Um, if you can see this little video here in the corner, this little box, uh, this is in my lab and this is sodium ascorbyl phosphate. So you can see what vitamin C looks like in a stable form. Another big problem is the poor absorption of L-ascorbic acid, which is a hydrophilic molecule, meaning water-loving molecule. How on earth do you get a water-loving molecule through your oily, waxy skin? And this is why we tend to form salts with vitamin C, so that not only is it more stable, but you also get much better penetration of the skin. So what percentage should you be using of vitamin C? It depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you're looking for just an antioxidant, then I would recommend 0.5 to 1% of vitamin C. If, however, you're looking for anti-pigmentation effects, then I would recommend between 5% to 20%. However, do not forget that with higher percentages of vitamin C, the pH tends to be lower because we need to stabilize it. And with skin of color, we can't afford to put 
too low of a pH on our skin because it can trigger your melanocytes. Anything that irritates or inflames your skin can lead to more pigmentation. So what I would say is a rule of thumb, test something out behind your ear to see if it's irritating you. If it's irritating you, please don't then put it on your face. Always test behind the ear, not on the face. Test where you can't see it and where the skin is actually quite thin, similar to the thickness of the skin under the eye, but it's also hidden. So it's a good um, little tip for you. So how do you incorporate vitamin C into your skincare routine? Well, the first thing to note is that vitamin C actually sensitizes your skin to UV. And this is why I never say where your vitamin C during the day if you've got skin of color. You don't want any thermal reactions taking place in your skin when you have UV hitting it because again, it can lead to pigmentation and damage of the skin. So I would say wear your vitamin C at nighttime and be vigilant with your SPF 50 during the day. Clinical studies have shown that a group of antioxidants combined has more of an effect than one antioxidant on its own. So that's why in formulations, you tend to see groups of antioxidants together. So for example, vitamin C, which is what we're talking about, vitamin E, so you tend to see tachopharyl in a lot of these. Here is a little video from my lab where you can see what tachopharyl acetate actually looks like. I love it. It's consistency is just beautiful. <laughs> Plus they tend to add ferulic acid with it or green tea extract. So these are all quite powerful antioxidants and combined you get a better effect. So the technical requirements for vitamin C are that they need to be in high concentrations, they need to be in stable formulations and they need to be able to penetrate the stratum corneum. That's a top layer of dead skin cells. And that's why we tend to put vitamin C in a pH of about 3.5 so it can penetrate. If it's not penetrating your skin and it's not getting deep enough, then it's basically not biologically relevant, meaning it's not working. So after all of that information, which product do I need to buy is basically what you're asking me, which is absolutely fine. So I've divided it into two categories and that is sensitive skin and non-sensitive skin. I have sensitive skin, so I feel for those sensitive skin people. If you have non-sensitive skin, go with Timeless 20% Vitamin C, E plus ferulic acid. So that basically you have a low um, pH, you have a high concentration of Vitamin C, you have grouped your antioxidants, but it's also got a ferulic acid in it as well. I wouldn't recommend this for my skin because I have sensitive skin, but I'd recommend it if you don't have sensitive skin. So that's for those people. If you have sensitive skin, then there are two options for you. I would either go for Eminence serum vitamin C plus E or I would go with Skin Medica C and E cream. All the links obviously I'm going to put for you in the description box below. In the description box below as well I have a little gift for you and that is a free guide for skincare for skin of colour. There are so many things that we can't put on our skin if you've got olive, Asian or African skin compared to Caucasian skin. A lot of the products you find actually on the shelves are really not suitable for our skin. So please do read that because it'll tell you the classic mistakes that are being made. We also have different problems to skin of, to Caucasian skin. We get more pigmentation. We don't wrinkle as quickly. Um, and so actually we need completely different ingredients. So do download that um, and that's my gift to you. If you did like this video, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell. And every week we will be sending you free information and free teaching videos. If you wanna see how I wear my vitamin C in my skincare routine, please do click on my skincare routine video. And also another video I really recommend is a vitamin A video because there's so many mistakes that people are making right now with vitamin A for skin of color. Um, so I do highly recommend you check that video out too.